So I finally got my Sonos Arc Ultra and the Sub Gen 4. I was expecting a round of software updates and player updates which is going to suffer from failures like it has always happened in the past before it finally passes. And I was expecting a nightmare to try to set up the Sonos Arc Ultra and the Sub Gen 4 like some people have been complaining over the last half a year or so. But funny enough, it went through without a hitch and on first attempt no less. I can probably count the number of times that that has happened over the last three years on two fingers maybe. And connecting it, no problem. So you can perform the upgrade and swap out from the original Sonos Arc Gen 1 to the Arc Ultra probably within half an hour and probably without your wife noticing. So you'll be alright. Just start right after she hits into the shower, she won't notice the difference visually. But she might hear the difference in the sound coming out from the soundbar and she'll be scratching her head. This sounds different. New router. So this is not a standalone review of the Sonos Arc Ultra. I'm doing a comparison between the original Arc Gen 1 and the Arc Ultra. So I posted a question asking you guys what kind of videos you want to see and the overwhelming response is that you want to compare the Arc Gen 1 and the Arc Ultra. So you may have the Arc Gen 1 already and you're considering whether it's worth upgrading to the Arc Ultra or if you are looking for a Sonos soundbar and you're wondering whether the discounted or a used Arc Gen 1 is worth the money or maybe splurge on the Arc Ultra which is retailing at 999 US dollars and in Singapore is 1899 Now I'll give you a clue of the direction of where this video is going. If you're looking for a soundbar today then just get the Arc Ultra. I'm providing kind of like a upfront summary of this video. This is in my opinion one of the best soundbars you can buy at $1,000 with a dollar change in this sleek format with full Dolby Atmos processing and has a built-in micro sub. So this is what this video is about. If you have an Arc Gen 1, is it worth the upgrade? Now, if you have no time for the rest of the videos, I respect that and I'll answer the question right away. The Arc Ultra is simply a much better sounding soundbar than the original Arc Gen 1. The sound stage is much wider. The surrounds are very well tuned and really seems to be coming from the sides much more so than the original Arc Gen 1, which wasn't that bad in the first place to begin with. The highs channel, well, they are pretty much the same as the original Arc in terms of presence, but it renders two more additional channels, thus the 9.1.4 for meaning the height channel. The vocals are really just crispy and very present this time round. There's no more dip in the mid-range anymore and the dialogue comes out really very well. So most important of all, the bass is actually much better than the original arc by a huge margin. Now before I tested the Arc Ultra, I wanted to say that the sound could be incrementally better and if you had the Arc Gen 1 then you might not need to upgrade but after, after I tested it out, after I plugged in the Arc Ultra, testing it on its own without a subwoofer, I was convinced that this is a great upgrade option. Now, if you're out of time, that's all for my upfront summary. If you have some time, I've done some frequency response sweep to compare the original Arc, which is now sitting on the floor this side, and the Arc Ultra, which is now in all its glory under my 55-inch LG CX TV. And I have also recorded the playback from both the soundbar, so you can hear and tell for yourself whether it is better or not. Now, some of you may agree it's better, some may not agree, but it is a question of whether it is worth it, right? Because objectively speaking, and when I say objective, I can prove it because I did the frequency response charts. I recorded things so they can tell objectively. Objectively speaking, it is better, but is it a lot better? Is it worth the money upgrading? So it's a sensitive question, sensitive question because it involves expectation. Now, if you want something that sounds twice as good, three times as good, then uh, let me just put it this way, you're not going to get it, right? Because the original Arc Gen 1 is already a very capable soundbar. Now, when you spend a little bit more, even if you spend twice the money, you're not going to get twice the performance, right? Because loss of diminishing returns, it was already good in the first place to get the increment. It is hard to achieve. So let me give you a scenario. You are using an iPhone 15 and when 
Apple announces the iPhone 16 Pro, you're wondering whether it's worth the upgrade. Now, the differences and the changes, they are there, right? You have various incremental upgrades moving from 15 to the 16 Pro. There are differences you can tell by just looking at it. When you get a 16 Pro and start to use it, the hubris of getting newer tech makes you look out for all the differences the upgrades make. And you're happy. But by the next morning, you wake up to the alarm. The first thing you do when you pick up the phone and you start using the phone, you don't even realize that it's a different phone. On a day-to-day -day basis, the changes melt into the background and you don't even tell what the differences are anymore. Until you go back to the older iPhone 15 and you realize, oh, that's where the differences are and it does feel a little lackluster. So this is the situation with the Arc Ultra. When you open it out of the box, you get a rush, right? Because it's slimmer height-wise and depth-wise and it's been stretched out just a little bit longer. It feels incrementally sleeker. When you fire it up, you'll find that the sound is actually a bit fuller on the low end. Actually, it's not a bit fuller. It is quite a lot fuller and I'll really show you how it's fuller. The dialogue feels a lot more present. The sound stage is wider, but overall, it's a sound bar is working within the constraint of that cylinder, housing 14 drivers and 15 amplifiers, all made to fit right under the TV. Now, if you expect them to sound like a pair of BMW 805 speakers, you will be disappointed. If you wanted them to sound twice as good as the original Arc Gen 1, you will be disappointed. But when it comes to sound, nothing is going to be twice as good. But the Arc Ultra, it is revolutionary. Oh, okay, maybe incrementally revolutionary. I'm trying to use words to, you know, temper your expectation a little bit. But it does bring the industry to a point in the development of soundbars where competitors are going to have to think about putting some form of base generating unit in a slim profile soundbar. The Arc Ultra's internal has been completely gutted. And if you compare it to the original Arc Gen 1, there's nothing in the Gen 1 that is being carried over. All the tweeters are changed. The number of tweeters have changed. The base drivers have changed. And there is a sound motion unit to generate bass and this is the key. Now the mid bass drivers are already smaller because the bass duties are already taken away from them to the sound motion unit. The sound motion driver only needs to focus on the lower frequencies and the tweeters now have more power dedicated to the higher frequencies. So this changes the sound profile and let me analyze this for you. No true play, no settings made, no surrounds, no subwoofer. I've not seen anyone else analyze the sound output from the Sonos Arc this way. So if you're after evidence-based evaluation of Sonos speakers, then you've got a very good reason to subscribe to this channel. So a very quick plug to this channel. Um, stay tuned if you want to get more videos on the Sonos Arc Ultra. I have a whole series and literally dozens of videos planned for the Arc Ultra over the next couple of weeks, months, maybe year or so, right? Okay, so let me just pull out all the frequency response charts here. So this is the original Arc Gen 1, right? And I've done four frequency sweep bars across four different volume levels at the lowest end, 35 volume, then 50, then 65, and finally 80. I would say that most people would not go beyond 80. If you go beyond 80, maybe see a doctor. So you will see that actually the sound curve remains relatively similar throughout all the different volumes. So there's great control over the sound within that original Arc Gen 1 soundbar. Except maybe at volume 80, you can see that the bass is uh, maybe tempered just a little bit because probably not enough power within the Sonos Arc Gen 1 to power the bass at that kind of volume, right? So you notice that there is an emphasis on the low mid-range. And in the mid-range, there's a slight dip. The dip in the mid uh, is between 400 and 700 hertz, which impacts vocals and dialogue because that's where vocals and dialogue lives. Now, bass hum is at about 150 hertz. It carries on all the way down to about 90 hertz and still has quite a bit of energy down to about 60 hertz or so. Now I'm going to pull up the Arc Ultra. This is the Arc Ultra's frequency response sweep again at various volumes all the way from 35 to 50 to 65 and 80 at the top end. Now you'll see that the mids 
the dip is no longer there. It's actually very flat, which is a good thing. So in fact, the entire frequency response in the mid and treble is actually quite flat. So the fact that the mids are holding up so well, it means that the dialogue is no longer suffering from the same issues as the Arc Gen 1. Now, I didn't feel quite that there was a problem with the Arc Gen 1 in the first place, but when you listen to this sound bars in the AB comparison, you will realize that, oh wow, okay, so that's where the difference is. So for those of you who think that the Arc 1 vocal is lacking, then there should not be any problem for you for the Arc Ultra. So now we need to touch on the bass. The bass is quite another monster altogether. It goes down to the 40 hertz or so. So on its own, the Arc Ultra is producing bass almost at regular bookshelf speakers level. I would say that the bass output is equivalent to the sounds coming out from a speaker with uh, between four and a half and five inch bass drivers and all from the sound motion unit. So this is actually pretty impressive. So what I did was I averaged out the frequency response between all the different volumes on the Arc Gen 1 and all the different volumes on the Arc Ultra. And this is the new chart. So if you look at the chart here in green is the response for the Arc Gen 1. In red is the response for the Arc Ultra. At any given volume, and throughout the entire frequency range, you will see that the Arc Ultra is actually going to be louder, right? Across all frequency range. So you probably may not have to push the volume up that high if you want the same level of volumes. But what is interesting is that assuming we're going to set your volume to 50, right? On both the Arc and the Arc Ultra, you will notice that you're going to get a lot more bass coming out, right? So in just looking at the chart itself, I would say that the Arc Gen 1 comfortably goes down to maybe the high 50 hertz or so, whereas the Arc Ultra is able to generate bass at an audible level down to about 40 odd hertz, the low 40 hertz, right? Now, all this is very technical, all this, I, I mean, I've tried to simplify it as much as you can and I tried to smooth out the curve, but you, you need to hear it for yourself, right? So what I did was I did some recording. Now, recording of the Arc on its own and the Arc Ultra on its own. And I've put the playback, right? You, you can listen to it yourself, but make sure you put on headphones so you can appreciate the differences. Now, even if you cannot hear the differences, which is going to be like strange, you should be able to hear the differences. I've put in the spectrum analyzer and when the Arc Ultra is playing, I will focus on the Arc Ultra's spectrum analyzer. So in you can compare it to the Arc Gen 1 spectrum analyzer, the mids and the higher frequencies, a bit hard to see the differences, but when the bass note kicks in, right, you can pause the video because they have all been timed and aligned properly. And you can see that there are a lot of instances throughout this short demo clip that you will see that the bass is actually going to be a lot louder in the Arc Ultra than the Arc Gen 1. And all this is done without the sub, right? So if you have a sub, right, it will take some duties away, but there are some changes in how the Arc Ultra connects to the sub, right, through a crossover reconfiguration. Now, I will not get into those details today, otherwise the video is going to end up a little bit too long. So just, I, I will probably cover those in a future video. So stay subscribed and ring the notification bell so when I release that, you will be able to tell. Now you will notice that the bass is better all around. The mid bass drivers are now being able to dedicate themselves to only producing sounds above 180 hertz. Anything below that is relegated to the sound motion driver. And because the sound motion driver doesn't have to handle sounds above 180 hertz, it does its job better at the 40 to 180 hertz range. Now I'm gonna leave you with these two clips, right? The first clip is that of the up. Ultra and the second clip is that of the Arc Gen 1. So enjoy them.
So if you have put on a pair of proper headphones to listen to the recording, you will notice that, hey, actually there is a remarkable difference. So summary of this video, I really want to say this, that if you are itching for an upgrade, just go for it. You will be able to tell the difference and it's going to sound better. But if you don't have anything right now and if you're looking for a soundbar, the Arc Ultra is probably the gold standard for the next couple of years before the Arc Ultra 2 or the Arc Mega or the Arc Megatron comes out, whatever it is, right? And I'll catch you in future videos on the Arc Ultra. See you around.